I'm Dave Welsh, the host of the Let's Visit show, and I have with me a guest. This is Walter Fidrocki from Great Neck and Ipswich. How are you doing? Pretty good, thank you. Very good. Thank you, Brian. Yeah. Uh, now, I've been to your home, and uh, wow, what a beautiful place you have up there. Oh, thank you. Um, it seems to me that you built at the very top of the hill, so you get a very good view of the Ipswich Bay, is that right? Oh, yes, yeah. Did you build that yourself? Yeah, well, I, had, I bought it uh, in four sections. Yeah. It came in and put in uh, one, two, and then one, two. So, so it's a pretty, fairly big house. Fairly big house, all right. Now, uh, how old a gentleman are you? Uh, how old are you? Yeah. 96. 96 years old. Yeah. That's a long history you have. Yeah. Too long, maybe. Too long. <laughs> now, the reason I'm interviewing you is uh, your war experience. During World War II, you were in the Army. Is that right? Right. Okay. Tell me about that. Well, I, uh, well, I, I was served in, uh, in the Philippines in the uh, all, the, all in that, so, that area that was Japan. In the so, Pacific. Yeah. So when the uh, when they gave up the Japanese, yeah. yeah. Uh, I was one of the, the first, I was in the first convoy to go in, into Japan. Oh, well, that was weird. That's strange. What was that like? Well, it was kind of, well, I, I was kind of, you know, I was wondering what's going to happen, but, but I figured that I, I had this faith in, in our government. Right. I don't imagine you were very welcome there. They, uh, when we came in, you know, we, uh, they put, uh, from the landing craft, they put, put us in the, the trucks, and uh, the Japanese people lined up the Alongside the road, and uh, and then bow as I. Well, they bowed with you. Oh, very good. Now you also told me a story that I think is fantastic. Something about Hiroshima. Oh, what well, was that all about? What was it all about? Yeah. What did you do in Hiroshima? Well, there was uh, there was nothing left to do. <laughs> When I uh, when I went in, one of the first things that when we went, I was in uh, one of the first first people to go into Japan, and uh, the f first thing I did was to go to the Hiroshima, and it, it was unbelievable. You know, it, it was everything was flattened out. You know, nothing left. Yeah, nothing left. Wow. Now you were in the medical corps. Yeah. Is that why you came in there? Yeah. Okay. Very good. Well, thank you, Walter. I appreciate this interview. Oh, you're well, quite welcome. Okay. Bye now. Bye. Good job. Thank you. The dropping of the atomic bomb on Hiroshima was one of the hardest decisions an American president ever had to make. But in 1945, Harry S. Truman stated, the buck stops here, and ordered the Enola Gay to carry out this mission. Hiroshima, a city of 550,000 inhabitants, was obliterated in less than a second. At least 80,000 people died instantly and thousands later succumbed to burns and radiation poisoning. All but a handful of concrete structures in the city's center had been completely leveled. 
By 1945, U.S. intelligence had learned that the Japanese government showed no signs of surrendering and would fight to the last man if the U.S. landed troops on the Japanese mainland. Reports correctly surmised that the Japanese military intended to execute all American prisoners in the event of an Allied landing. Truman said, this war must end. Instant devastation, Hiroshima Peace Memorial, Genbaku Dome. A giant mushroom-shaped cloud rises above the city of Hiroshima. This footage was taken just three minutes after the atomic bomb explosion. Hiroshima since then has been rebuilt. One building, still standing in the city center, retains the scars of the bomb drop. The Genbaku Dome was inscribed as World Heritage as a testament to the damage and suffering the bomb caused. It was built in 1914 and was covered with a copper-domed roof. It housed government offices promoting local industry. It was a marketplace and a venue for art exhibitions and movie screenings. Locals would come for recreation. The building stood among mainly two-story houses its height and dome made it a symbol of the city. The bomb was dropped on the morning of the 6th of August 1945. Heat rays hit the building and melted the copper roof 0.2 seconds after the explosion. The roof framework remained as the iron withstood the heat. The shock waves hit the building and destroyed the main staircase just 0.8 of a second later. Everything directly below the atomic fireball was devastated within just one second. The bomb's huge power left traces on every piece of building debris. At 18.15 a.m., nearly all those within 500 meters of Hiroshima's ground zero were killed instantly. The lunchbox of a deceased student tells us of the tragedy caused by the bombing. After demolishing the entire city in 10 seconds, the giant fireball dimmed and the strong updraft formed an enormous mushroom-shaped cloud. The city was turned into ash the Genbaku Dome has remained untouched. It is a symbol of the demand for the abolition of weapons of mass destruction. A Japanese court on Wednesday for the first time recognized people exposed to radioactive black rain that fell after the 1945 US atomic attack on Hiroshima as atomic bomb survivors, ordering the city and the prefecture to provide the same government medical benefits as given to other survivors. The Hiroshima District Court said all 84 plaintiffs who were outside of a zone previously said by the government as where radioactive rain fell also developed radiation-induced illnesses and should be certified as atomic bomb victims. All of the plaintiffs are older than their late 70s, with some in their 90s. The landmark ruling comes a week before the city marks the 75th anniversary of the US bombing. The U.S. dropped the world's first atomic bomb on Hiroshima on 6 August 1945, killing 1,40,000 people and almost destroying the entire city. The plaintiffs were in the areas northwest of the Ground Zero, where radioactive black rain fell hours after the bomb was dropped. 